over 60% of building voice agents is testing. That's why in today's video, I'll walk you through my full free testing framework. The three core layers that guarantee you test your agent from every angle. And as a bonus, if you watch to the end of the video, I'll give you a bonus layer that pulls some of the strongest data you can ever get from a test run. If you're new, I'm Mark. I build voice agents for companies around the globe. And I also run AI Voice Pioneers, the best place to learn both how to build and sell AI voice agents. By the end, you'll know exactly how to test your voice agents correctly and avoid the mistakes most builders make. Let's start with the first approach, which is manual chat testing, not automated, but manual. Now keep in mind the first two approaches that are done are only going to be done under the text layer, not the voice layer, which means at first we're not actually testing for how the agent sounds, things like its pronunciation, maybe its latency, maybe the way it's reading back text. No, we're only testing its brain. Okay, so things like its knowledge base adherent, instruction following, tool column, refusal boundaries, and so on. Everything that can be tested over text, we want to do and get out of the way, which is going to be a lot more efficient. So what I'm doing, and this is normally when I'm building a production agent, I'll be looking at my early stage prompt here, and I'll test its core critical functionality. So things like, okay, let's go through an appointment booking scenario, for example. This is a barbershop agent. And I'll just walk you through how I do this. So let's say I want to book an appointment. And as I'm going through this, I'll show you what I'm looking for and then some advanced things you can do. No problem. What service would you like to book? And do you have another language? Just haircut. Actually, I could use haircut. Okay, great. Tomorrow at noon, let's say. Now, what I'm doing here as it's going through is I'm just looking to see if it is adhering to the script in my prompt. Is it performing the way I want? I mean, I'm just taking notes on it mentally. Okay, let me check if this person's available tomorrow. Now the next thing, if you have an API that you're using, you're also checking the tool invocations. This is like really standard stuff, but it's super nice as opposed to doing this over the phone where you can't see the live tool invocations to actually test it directly in the chat and I can see, okay, so it sent the messages correctly according to the JSON that I have formatted here. So everything's looking good. And then it says, but he does have availability. Is there a specific? Let's do 4 p.m. Okay. And I can go through these. Now, let's say that I don't like the way it just gave me this information. I don't like how it said, is there any a specific time in that range that works for you? What I would then do is I would just keep this open right here. Go in, find the part where perhaps I have that in the script down here. Get your full name for the booking. And I would tweak it to be what I want. So let's say I, I is there another date? right over here or maybe I put it in the prompt just directly under the rules rule don't ask if there is a specific date fix my spelling instead I just want it to suggest it right date only suggest it so what you do is you click this button called replay chat and it will run through the entire scenario again that you just did to see if it fixes your problem now one thing to keep in mind that's really important is sometimes these agents due to their probabilistic nature will have one-time flukes sometimes they'll just do things that are unexpected but they're very rare so it's a good practice to try and actually get it to recreate that error that you saw before you go in and modify the prompt reason being you may end up changing something that didn't need to be changed which creates more work for you down the road okay so it, it ran through it again and let's see if it came back okay would you like to come in a little earlier or a little bit later? Let me know if that works for you. So it changed the way that it's pronouncing its words. But we can even take it a step further than this. Um, we can say debug, and this is really cool. So what I get here is a few different options. I can regenerate the exact answer. So let's say I want to test this again. And in this case, I want it to change the way it responded. Let's say I, I want to regenerate just this particular answer. So I'll just click it again. And would you like to come in a little bit earlier or right after 1230? Let me know if that works for you. So this is a great way, like I said earlier, to verify that you're getting a consistent error or it's performing in a way that you don't like. Regenerate the answer. You can even go further than this. It's normally overkill, but you can regenerate 10 different variations of the answer to see the probabilistic nature of the AI that you're dealing with. And it'll take a second here. Oh, beautiful. And then it even gives it a frequency rating. Okay, how many times did... These are all the response variations for one thing. You can really see it branching out. Actually, noon is already booked. Noon is already booked. Would you like to come in? So this gives you all the different possibilities for the way that it could be responding. Super powerful. I know, right? You're probably like, that's amazing, Mark. That's what I would probably do four or five of my main functionality before then I would move on to simulation testing. When would you want to use simulation testing? Simulation testing is for people who want to test every possible outcome and possible scenario for your voice agent. And simulation testing is really, really powerful. Um, there's many things you can do with it. The only problem with it is that 
currently it's extremely time consuming to write out every single test scenario. And in addition, make sure that it's written right, because if you mess up the success criteria, it becomes a mess really quick and doesn't judge correctly. That's why I spent a lot of time building two GPTs that completely solve this problem 100% of the time. What they do is build out the entire test scenarios. You know what, I'll just show you right now so that I don't have to, and they import directly into retail. So I just go into my prompt here, copy and paste the whole prompt. I don't even say a word besides how many test scenarios I wanted to generate. And I'll just put it in here like generate, let's say I need 25 most common ones that might break my agent and watch what it's gonna do. This is so cool. So I'm just putting in my prompt so it knows the parameters by which it can try to poke holes in the prompt. And now it's gonna generate literally 25 race format test scenarios. By the way, race is a, it's just a formatting for prompting that I use really solid, you can look it up. And now it's giving me these different options. So it's gonna give the user prompt basically a role. And essentially, if you're not familiar with simulations tab over here, what you're doing are, is building mini agents that are going to test your agent. And then they're gonna be evaluated by your defined success criteria. But there's a few things to understand about simulation testing in general. Simulation testing is not made to be used the way I think most people are using it and getting it wrong, which is putting in very broad examples Test scenarios essentially are made to be surgical, is what I found. So the correct way is to build many tiny test scenarios, not big broad test. Okay, so you want tiny surgical single assertion traps. And there's basically five reasons why you should do this. So when you make one big scenario, what happens is number one, the agent has many branching opportunities. Um, number two, multiple reasoning layers overlap. Number three, the evaluations become a little fuzzy. It's harder to evaluate something that is very vague. Number four, the failures are often harder to diagnose. And then five, as a consequence, the test loses its overall meaning. That's why you wanna make these very specific. And when you do that, you get three benefits. You stress one rule at a time. So one rule in the prompt. Two, you force the model into narrow decision points. And then three, you can isolate those breakpoints down to the exact parameter in the prompt that caused that defect. Hopefully this is making sense. So that's exactly what this GPT builds, is very sm tiny specific prompts and test scenarios. Double booking attempt. Caller pushes for after hour slot. Caller asks for pricing. So just take this right here, paste it into this JSON. G there's a second GPT, which if you join my community, you'll have access to both of these. Hit paste, and I mean seriously, this will save you so much time. And what it's going to do is take all of these tests, okay, sometimes by the way, you need to make sure that you tell it, not always, but make sure to include every test scenario. Sometimes it'll only do the first 15, but hopefully it works. I didn't include it in this one. So it'll codify all of these and we'll just download the file as JSON, verify that it has all of them. Let's see, go to my downloads and let's see if it came through iron and blade, test one, two, three, four, five, up to 25, correct. Beautiful. I'll just go right over here, hit import, drag it right in and watch the magic. Boom, look at that. And all of them by default, if you're curious, are using the 4.1 GPT only because that LLM is the best for testing. It's a little bit more expensive, but I found it to work better. Um, you can also add dynamic variables if you ask it to, but there you go. You have all your different tests completely enumerated. And then what you do is just hit test, run test, and it will run all of them simultaneously and voila. So now I'll show you, this is like really impressive to me. So it's running all of those tests simultaneously. And then once it's done, that's when the real excitement happens because we have the data to then improve our system. Again, I don't recommend building out these simulations unless you're already pretty much finalized in your prompt. You've done a lot of manual chat testing. You've gotten it to a point where it is performing well, but you wanna test many different possible scenarios like knowledge base adhere or instruction following that you otherwise wouldn't be able to test manually because it would just take so much time. So. Another thing I recommend, as just a quick pro tip, when you're going to be using a large knowledge base, say like me in this case, you can also upload this knowledge base here and build test scenarios to test every single question in that knowledge base to see if it's actually adhering to it. Even better yet, try to get the LLM to ask questions that don't word for word show up in the knowledge base but are related to see how well your agent is associating the caller's question with the data that it should be retrieving in the knowledge base. So kind of an advanced tip, but very helpful. Let's go back to our simulations. So here it's doing the test for me right now in live. And a quick note, sometimes when, even with the right success criteria, it will sometimes tell you that the agent failed, even if the agent didn't fail to your standards. So it's always worth going in and double checking on all the fa failures. And I actually recommend 
reading out through the entire thing and seeing where it went wrong. Now, another thing to note, this is very important, always make sure you add end call function right here because if you don't, then all your test simulations will end in a loop. So the agent has to be able to end the call. So let's just go through the history and see what happens. So we have 15 passed, seven failed, 60% pass rate. Well, that's a D, not bad. I'm just joking, this agent's not fully done, so we've got some work to do. But let's, let's look through some of the successful ones and let's look through some of the failures and then I'm gonna show you how to fix the failures. So in this case, caller asks in another language. And then the agent's like, let me see if there's any availability to cut hair um, tomorrow at 10 in the morning, that's what it's saying. Alex is not available at 10 a.m. So then they go through the entire thing in Spanish, which is a really nice test. Obviously, we're gonna have to move on to the voice section to actually test whether this conversation right here in a foreign language nailed the accent or not. But like I said before, we're just testing the brain right now. Okay, so as you can see, it's even booking the appointment, doing the tool calling and everything correctly. Something cool that we can do is hit view in playground and this will give us more control and allow us to even manipulate the test and continue so if we want to go in and debug like we did before, we're just back into the manual chat. This is a very nice feature. Now let's look through one that failed and I'll show you how to fix it. We see in test five, the caller skips the service type and we can read that the agent did not ask what service would you like to book basically before proceeding. This is a serious problem. Instead of going in and prompting this myself to fix it along with all the other failures, what I can do really quick is just copy this, bring it over into Claude or ChatGPT, whichever you prefer with a very simple prompt. And you can say something like using best prompting practices for voice agents. Just take this, analyze what went wrong and give me the best, simplest, clearest prompt that will ameliorate or fix this issue so that I can add it to my master prompt in a second. I'll hit save. And then what will happen is it's going to give me a little prompt snippet that I can copy and paste and put it back into retail at the bottom of my agent. Okay, I'm gonna just copy and paste this little snippet and I'm gonna put this at the bottom of my agent. Keep in mind, this is not how the end of my formatting is going to be for my agent. I'm going to reprompt and restructure all of this at the end, but I just wanna see if the prompt it gives me will help this problem. So I'll hit publish. And then what I'll do is go through every single simulation basically and take that information, put it into Claude and it'll spit back a prompt that will fix that particular error I had. Okay, so let me go back to that one and just show you what I'll do. So test five, caller skips service type. So now what I'll do is rerun the simulation, run test with the corrected prompt to see if it fixes the error. And then based off that, essentially we'll refine, rinse and repeat. So if it still doesn't fix it, I'll put it back into Claude, tell it that it didn't fix it with its previous prompt and then have it upload a new prompt and put that one back into retail. So it's a continuous refinement. So let's see if this one comes out with something better. Okay, so in this case, our little prompt that we added still didn't fix the problem. So sometimes what I'll do is actually take my entire prompt and I'll give Claude a very specific guideline. It says, do not change anything because I've worked hard on it at this point. Simply change only the part in the prompt that will fix the error I'm getting. It can be a little risky taking your entire system prompt and putting it to Claude to ask it to fix it because then you have to read through and make sure it didn't change anything else. But I find if you add this parameter to not change anything um, besides the exact part that it needs to fix, you're typically okay. So what I'll do is take this again where it messed up, take this entire simulation. Here's what went wrong again. And it should re-prompt it. Now, sometimes the little code snippet, prompt snippet in Retail AI will work to fix the entire agent, but sometimes it won't because there's other contradictory parts in your prompt that are telling the agent to do one thing where Claude is giving you new prompting which is telling the agent to do another. So that's why it's important sometimes to give the entire agent prompt. Okay, now output the entire unchanged perfect prompt only with your modifications fix. It. And here it goes. And so I'll copy this prompt now that it's done, bring it over here. And I'll basically rinse and repeat this until I have a near 100% success rate under the simulations. I'll run the test again and see if that fixed it. All right, and check it out. Look, it passed correctly, beautiful. Now the third and final layer is testing the system over voice. You guessed it. Things like, is the agent pronunciating people's names wrong? Pronunciating? Pronouncing people's names wrong. Or is it saying people's emails too quickly or reading back phone numbers too fast? Or for instance, is the latency too quick or too, too long? These are all things that you test over voice. In our case, we're dealing with a multilingual agent. So we need to test whether in the native language that we're testing, 
does it sound like a native with no accent? Those kinds of things all will have to be done. And contrary to popular opinion, I don't think this can be done by a voice agent. I know there can be benefit to automating your voice-to-voice -voice testing through various platforms so that you don't have to do it all manually. But the only problem is, at the end of the day, you still have to do it manually or have someone do it. Because a voice agent's never going to interrupt another voice agent the way a human will interrupt another voice agent. So you have to think about it from the terms of these callers who are coming in and testing these systems. They're going to be talking in a messy environment. And so what I always do for my production of agents across the spectrum is I sit down and I dial. I call it with my phone and I test my core major ones if it's booking, rescheduling, canceling. How does it sound over the phone? How does it handle its intonations? I find there's a danger as automators to try and automate every single possible thing, but there are some things you still can't automate. And testing of voice agents, I think true voice to voice has to be done manually in order to get the best result. Now, there's a few tips I have. In addition to testing it yourself, I recommend sending it to a friend, a few friends, if you have a team of developers, having them test the voice agent as well. Preferably people who don't even know they're talking to a voice agent will give you the most realistic test results from what I found. And as you're testing these agents, you want to go through the call history and see if in the transcription there's anything you can pull out that it made a mistake. Test the look at the tool calls. Are they coming across correctly? These are all things you have to do. And then if you want to go back to manual testing, you can hit view and playground and it will take you back to what we had before where you can continue on the conversation and test it as so. And I've literally had to spend hundreds of hours testing my assistants, just calling them. At our current state, if there was a voice agent that could do it better than me to test my voice agent, then I'd be just be using that voice agent as my default voice agent. So it doesn't really make sense. And another thing I like to do, just like we did before with the simulations, is come back over here and take my entire transcript, just like we had before, and paste it into Claude and then give it a slightly different prompt. So in this case, instead of saying, fix the agent's prompt, I'll come back here and I'll actually say, I need you to suggest prompt improvements and also enumerate everything this agent might be doing wrong. These are some things that I'll do and I'll paste multiple transcripts right in here to give me an overall feedback of my assistant. Uh, it's f very, very powerful technique. I know some of you will ask me, what about conversational flow agents, Mark? The good news is every last point that I just shared with you can also be applied to conversational flow agents, especially since you now have flex mode, which basically combines and merges the context of all of them together. The only difference is if you're using rigid mode, when you go in to test the agent, the nodes are going to move as you test them. So if I say, what about this property for a real estate agent? And now it's ch transitioning nodes, as you can see. Now you can debug these the same way to regenerate the answer. Most of this is going to be pretty much the same in principle from what I've shared with you. The only small differences are going to be adding fine tuning examples, which if you want to learn all about this, go ahead and watch my conversational flow entire video that I just uploaded last month. So hopefully this helps you. There's one other thing that I think is incredibly important to share. If you are deploying these voice agents for production on site, you have to tell your clients that some of the best testing will actually happen during deployment. What I mean by that is, for us, the first week of deployment is actually all hands on deck, some of the most important time and some of the best gold value that we can then feed back into our agent for refinement. Sometimes my customers will go, Mark, you're telling me that you're going to be fixing the agent after it's deployed, so it's going to be making mistakes? To which I respond, yes, Mr. Customer, how long does it take you to train your receptionist? Oh, well, maybe two to three months. Okay, well, our receptionist needs training as well. The only difference is when we teach it something, it never forgets. So when you deploy these things, you can test and test them as much as you possibly want and get them to a pretty good standard. So always take the call history from the first two, three, maybe week of deployment and put that information back into Claude like I showed you to then find prompt adjustments that you can fine tune and correct the agent with. That's some of the best advice I could give anyone who's testing these agents for real. I appreciate you watching to the end of the video. We've covered the three layers to voice AI testing with the fourth being a bonus layer for production grade agents. I appreciate you watching all of my videos. Consider subscribing, consider hitting the like button, and consider joining the community if you want to learn how to build and also sell these voice agents to real businesses. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Tech Tomlick, where AI finds its voice. Come for the tech, stay for the transformation.